Adventures in Coaching is a segment that we love to do here to maybe help you get inspired to maybe change careers or maybe to just find those little differences that you need in your life to better your life. And I'm here with Kim Smith, who's going to give us some more information. Now, in the last session, we talked about kind of the struggles of making changes when it comes to your career. And now we're going to start to talk about what could be holding you back from success. Kim, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here again, Maddie. Thank you. We love to have the opportunity <laughs> to chat with you only because you have so many fantastic ideas and so many stepping stones to help people find maybe that next path in their life. And so we talked a lot about what it's like to make a change. Mm -hmm. Now, why can people get stuck in a little rut when they're going to make a change? Yeah, and this is one of my very favorite topics in coaching because it's where we get to dig deep a little bit and figure out you know, what makes us tick. And, you know, a lot of things can get us stuck, like maybe not knowing where we're going and exactly what we want to do. But once we kind of identify a plan or we think we've got a place we want to go, sometimes we get stuck because of fear. And it could be fear of failure. It could be fear of success. Um, but they show up as like limiting beliefs often. And, and what that means is those small, little small voices that we all have that tell us like, oh, maybe I'm not you know, smart enough to do this, or I don't have enough experience, or um, just the self-doubts that kind of can creep into our thoughts that might hold us back. And a lot of times it looks like procrastination, like we just can't get moving. So if you're starting to feel like you're procrastinating, you're not getting anywhere, it might be a limiting belief that's holding you back. Now, we've heard this term limiting beliefs a couple of times from mm -hmm. you recently. And so let's talk about what a limiting belief could be. So like I was talking about, it could be something that, you know, is that small voice that shows up, but it's really about identifying those and where they come from. And, you know, good news is we all have them. Everybody has limiting beliefs. It's not, you know, it's not uh, um, something that's very unique. And we, we get them from life experiences. They can have cropped up because of something that happened in childhood or in the workplace, or you know, maybe the teacher told you something that you know hurt your feelings, or you know something. But somehow it's gotten exaggerated over time, and it's manifesting in our adult lives in ways that may not serve us anymore. Which is wild to think about. The psychological aspect of this all mm -hmm. is something that is so intriguing, and that's where you really come in to help people kind of walk through this. Now, as we've been talking, there are limiting beliefs and there are fear. And so, how can you tell the difference between it being a limiting belief or mm -hmm. it being fear-based holding you back? You know, I think they're very similar, so it's a little bit hard to describe. But the fears are really driving those limiting be beliefs. Um, and those fears are sort of underneath those. So, you know, that fear of, you want to you want to drill down and figure out what that fear is so that you can see why that limiting belief is holding you back. So is it fear of success? Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of being judged and criticized? That's a really big one when people start taking that, you know, new path forward and they're worried about, oh my gosh, what are, what, what are my parents going to think of me? What are my friends? What are, what's society going to think of me, you know, doing something different? Um, so those fears really underlie and drive those limiting beliefs. If we acknowledge that we're in fear, is there anything that we can find a way to kind of work around it and what can we do about it? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, like I was saying before, fear is so normal when you get to the stage of wanting to make change and identifying what it is is really going to be helpful. So, you know, taking a look at where it might have come from and identifying it, naming it. How does it make you feel when you're in that fear so that you can recognize it when it crops up? And it's not enough to just really know about, you know, what that fear is. That awareness is key. But in order to move through it, you have to have courage. And, you know, courage is not the absence of fear, it's taking action anyway in spite of it. So taking some steps, some baby steps, can often be the antidote to eliminating that fear and creating some momentum in what it is you're trying to do and achieve. Which I think is so important because not only will you learn a lot about yourself as you're moving forward and making this decision of change, but you'll also just learn a lot about yourself in your coping mechanisms right. and how you behave in certain situations because you are re-experiencing those things that have created these voices in your head. Now, as people are sitting down with themselves and they're starting to talk about the limiting beliefs and the fear, there are ways for them to move through them. Absolutely. And again, it's... 
you know, it's not kind of a one and done. Once you figure out what the fear is, you know, it's going to take practice. You are going to notice when these come up and you might be getting triggered in a lot of areas of your life, not just work or, you know, trying to move forward with a goal. It can, it can happen in a lot of places. And what I found is that, you know, they're not really different across different parts of your life. They're pretty much the same fears and limiting beliefs that you have. So recognizing them is really important. And then having those strategies of like, oh gosh, there it is again. What do I need to do? How do I need to move forward? Do I need to take a pause and take a step back and not react to something? Or, you know, is it just a matter of like taking a baby step? And, you know, if I'm trying to make some change in my career, is it a matter of, doing some research, uh, you know, sending some emails, doing some informational interviews, you know, what does it look like to help get you out of that fear? And, you know, like I said, action and taking, you know, courage and taking action is the antidote to fear and limiting beliefs. Which as people go through this process and they start to mm -hmm. identify those fears and those limiting beliefs, how can they start to move forward beyond them? That's a good question. Um, you know, it's about having that plan. If you don't have a plan, you know, you're really not going to be going anywhere. So I love um, utilizing SMART goals, and SMART is the acronym for specific, measurable, attainable or achievable, uh, relevant, and time-bound. So if you can take a look at your goals and utilize that SMART acronym to kind of help yourself, um, you know, have that plan and hold yourself attainable, it can be hugely helpful which I think is something that a lot of us have a hard time holding ourselves to these goals. Now, this is where a coach would really come in and help. So yes. as you are making these changes, how can a coach kind of guide you through this? Well, so a coach really believes that you know inside what you want to do, and it's my job to pull it out of you. Like, what is that dream that you have? What is that goal that you, that you want to attain? And then help you to create the steps to get there. And in addition to that, I will help hold you accountable. Um, it's not that you're going to be in trouble if you, you know, don't do something, but maybe we explore the why, you know, why are you stuck again? And is it those limiting beliefs that are cropping up or is it some deeper fear that we need to address? Or is it just the fact that, you know, you need a little extra push to make that first step and to take that, that leap of faith, so. Which I think that there is so many benefits to having a coach to just give you that little bit of extra push because I know that's where I tend to struggle is sometimes I just need that little motivation mm -hmm. to help myself get to the top of the mountain that I'm trying to mm -hmm. climb from the last time we sat down and went through some of this information. Now, if people are interested in having you as their coach to help them with any of these moments of struggling that they could be experiencing, <laughs> what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? So just go to my website adventuresandcoaching.com and you can fill out the form there or get more information or you can email me at kim at adventuresandcoaching.com. Kim, thank you so much for being here and giving us all this wonderful information. It's so nice to just chat with you and kind of work through these things with you as I'm sitting here and just learning so much from you. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Maddie. Make sure that you check out Adventures in Coaching. That way, if you are maybe looking for that little bit of motivation, you can get it from Kim because she's absolutely wonderful. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back from the break, we've got more of the show, so stay tuned.